spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Lincoln Mercury. Nobody has more kinds of cars for more kinds of people. See them at the sign of the cat. By Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. And by State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you live, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes, of course, here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is hump day, and the teams will be getting back on the field. Sunday night, we will be playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And... It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because Steelers have a, a formidable defense and Justin Fields has been better than advertised. Much like Dak Prescott, he has been able to keep Russell Wilson at bay and at the moment they are not making a change at quarterback. So we have all kinds of stuff that's going on. Right now, yesterday, Devontae Adams, one of only a few players that have had four 1,000 yard seasons, I'm sorry, 100 yard, excuse me, 100 catch seasons, has requested a trade out of the Raiders. And here's what we're getting this morning. Now we've heard, like Mike Fisher says, at the present time, the Cowboys have no interest in doing that. We know the Cowboys are cheap. Devontae Adams is like $26 million the next couple of years. So they may have to do some kind of work on his contract to be able to move him. Um, but we know the Cowboys don't sign big name players. The last time they made a big move was Amari Cooper with the Raiders. Now, keep in mind, the Cowboys have traded with the Raiders some 10 times in the past. So there is a relationship there. And some people could say that uh, Al Davis, maybe he's Jerry Jones's long lost daddy because you could see a lot of parallels in the things that Jerry Jones does at this point. That's kind of like Al Davis. But be that as it may, Diana Rusi said the Jets and the Cowboys are among the many teams monitoring the Devontae Adams situation. Both have checked in with the Raiders. Now, that's key. Now, I, I don't know if she's just this is conjecture or what, or if there's actually been a conversation. I'm told at this point that Vegas is in no rush to make a move until a team reaches their asking price. But Adams wants out ASAP. So let me say this again. This just posted at 9-11. This posted six minutes ago. Let me read it one more time. The Jets and Cowboys are among many teams. A lot of teams would look at it. I mean, people have said, you know, the Commanders might be. that uh, uh, The Jets definitely would be. The Cowboys. Um, that Kansas City would be. Both have checked in. But she says, both have checked in with the Raiders. I'm told at this point that Vegas is in no rush to make a move until a team reaches out, reaches their asking price. But Adams wants out. You have to figure that it's got to be a first round pick. Without a doubt, it's got to be a first round pick. And they will have to do something with that contract. So there you have that. Now, you know, um, as far as our Cowboys go, um, yesterday they, there was an article in Bleacher Report. I can't remember who wrote it. But they were talking about um, disappointing rookies, first-round picks, and at uh, best and worst. They ended up putting Tyler Guyton at number five, okay, as the fifth most disappointing rookie so far. And partially, that's because he has given up four sacks, and I believe he leads the NFL in penalties. If you 
most people looked at the situation and said, Tyler Guyton will be better than Cooper Beebe at first. But then we also heard that Tyler Guyton might not be ready to start the season as the number one guy. He's still a rookie who only has four games. Now, a lot of people will have revisionist history. And they'll say, we should have held on to Tyron Smith. Well, here's an interesting thing for you guys is Tyron Smith is struggling with the Jets right now. Tyron Smith has given up three sacks. Now, his pro football focus rating is a 70, but clearly Tyron Smith is not um, playing like Tyron Smith of old. And in the end, when you look at having two guys that are struggling, you may be better off having the young guy who's struggling, who has you know the strength, the tools, the health, and everything else issues, and can get better. We've probably seen the pinnacle of what Tyron Smith is. So um, as we go through and we kill um, Tyler Guyton, on the flip side of this, surprisingly, Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys in um, time to throw, I believe, are third. So they're not getting to the quarterback, or some of that may be that Dak Prescott is moving the ball around and getting rid of it quicker, but they're not getting to the quarterback as much as they could be. So, you know, maybe you're looking at this and we're looking at this the wrong way. This is the toughest spot on the offensive line. You literally are on an island, and the fact that we are not getting the quarterback killed a la Chaz Green says at least some good things there. So there's that. Something that's also kind of interesting this morning is we've got a couple of things. Is Dak Prescott on an ad for the next Venom, mag, uh, Venom movie number three? Let's go to the tape and check this out. Can we finally admit we're lost? We know exactly where we are. Do you see the stadium nearby? That way, I think. <clears throat> Come on, guys. I'm going to miss my warm-ups. <laughs> How are you doing? That? <clears throat> That's weird. <sighs> Kitty up, cowboy. I'm not that kind of cowboy. How fast do you think you can get that thing to go? Uh-uh. This is not in my new country. <laughs> I so see. Surprise, horsey! It's definitely not this contract. Oh, what did you eat? Here we go. <laughs> Venom, the last dance, only in theaters. Um, and that, my friends, the big mystery of why you resign in Dallas. <laughs> You're not getting that in Tennessee. You're not getting that in Tennessee. You're not getting, uh, you're just not. As the quarterback of America's team, win or lose, you get publicity. And you can see, they didn't call Pat Mahomes. They didn't. They didn't call Josh Allen. They didn't. They didn't call C.J. Stroud. They called Dak Prescott. And that's why you re-sign a contract with the Cowboys, even as bad as Jerry Jones is. So, now, here's another thing that's kind of interesting this morning. And maybe maybe I, I looked at this the wrong way. Maybe Micah's podcast isn't the worst thing in the world because... It's, it's gotten Cowboy fans and us up in arms and upset about seeing him and everything else and all that. And I know when I saw um, Big Play Slay um, on his podcast and they're yucking it up and everything else. And I'm sitting here like, you know, you, you got to understand where it used to be where I grew up. You used to have literally the players talk about Tom Landry and George Allen meeting at, at midfield to, to fight it out. OK, there was literally hate in the rivalry between the Cowboys and Washington. I mean, the Cowboys, yeah, the Cowboys and Washington uh, Redskins. There was games between the Eagles and Cowboys with Buddy Ryan and things that they called the body bag game. There was real hate between there. 
You saw Jimmy Johnson literally talking about Buddy Ryan's fat ass, okay? Because you knew Jimmy Johnson did not like Buddy Ryan. And the players fall in line with that. There were games like the Bounty Bowls. And, you know, this is the aggression and the anger that used to be out there with football. Not anymore. We work out together in the off season. We trade jerseys. And now we do podcasts with each other. And so I'm looking at this and I'm just like, I don't know how the day after playing a game, especially after they got molly whopped, um, Big Play Slay is on with Micah Parsons. And apparently it did more damage to the Eagles than it did definitely to the Cowboys. And maybe subtly, this is a way that Micah Parsons figured a way to, you know, go behind enemy lines and literally just blow the place up. And my camera did it's coming back. Okay. Um, hang on, good people. Let's go to that camera. Um, we've still got problems with the internet, and every time the internet drops, it ends up uh, losing our camera there. So there's there we go. So we'll get back. Our Wi-Fi cameras don't go. But here we go. Let's listen to Big Play Slay having to literally do the walk of shame here. In the type of way, everybody, I don't see the comments, you know, it's, it's, it's noticeable. I see it all day. You know, yes, I turned off my comments on Twitter. I did a lot of stuff, man, because it's like, hey, we are human. Y'all can get to us too. So I got to just ignore some of that kind of stuff. But for people to say, hey, take the seat off your chest, Slay, because of this. Like, I lead in a different type of way. I'm not a big vocal guy like Hurts. You know, Hurts, y'all see Hurts all the time. Y'all say he got serious face and that. I am the joyful side of the team, of the leadership. I'm a guy that's going to put smiles on your face. Uh, if you're looking like you had a bad day, I'm the one that's going to try to cheer you up and make your day better. You know, so I bring a different type of energy that the team needs. You know, uh, I need the serious stuff to Hurts. You know, I yell all the yelling stuff to, back in the time, was Kels. Kels would do a lot of yelling that time. I used to let Fletch do all the yelling. I'm more of a guy that's kind of like similar here, very understanding, I try to lead by example by just working hard, doing the best of my ability to let me do what I need to do to you know, be prepared for the game. But my leadership skills are way different from everybody else. And, you know, I'm still blessed enough and thankful enough to be a captain on this team. And uh, yeah, man, so that's what it really is with me, with the, with the, with the podcast with Michael. Like, we ain't got a great relationship. <laughs> uh, I know it's real beef with the, with the organizations and the fan base. Uh, I'm with y'all, man. I want to whip the Cowboys' ass every time. But... I, I do have an outside life in football. And I know how y'all get, man, fans. But Philly fan, please, please, just trust your boy. I'm here with y'all. I'm here with y'all. We all one. And what we can't have is dividing, you know what I'm saying? Dividing, dividing. I know I get attacked a lot, which is cool, which is cool with me. If I'm playing bad, attack me, please. You know what I'm saying? I hold myself accountable way before you hold myself accountable. And um, I got that seal on my chest for a reason. And guys love it. Guys appreciate what I bring to the team. The organization appreciate what I bring to the team. And uh, yeah, man, that's what about. Yeah. Um, that's not a good look. That's definitely not a good look. And here it is on Wednesday when the team gets back <clears throat> to practice that you are literally having to turn off your notifications on Twitter. Now you're going to have to answer to your teammates and everything else. And you're supposed to be a captain on the team. You got your, your fan base that are like, oh, hell no. And they want to get rid of you. So let's say Micah Parsons, good job. Good job uh, uh, doing that. And it'll be interesting to see going forward, will Slay, who threw his teammate, C.J., uh, Gardner Johnson under the bus, um, laughing it up. See how that relationship works. I can't wait to talk about that in uh, a few hours with Dan Salio. Um, it's almost comical because I got a phone call, or excuse me, a text message from Philly 500, and it's like, I didn't get the link for today's show. Does Dan not want us on? And I'm like, what? I'm like, you do know it's only Tuesday, right? And he's like, oh, no wonder nobody was here 
at 5 a.m. Yeah. But here's the reality. Here's the reality, and I'm going to put it out here like this. Over the next four or five games, we have a really tough road to hoe. We've got the Steelers, we've got the Lions, we've got uh, the 49ers, we've got the Falcons, and we've got the Eagles. And that's going to be tough to win those games. The Eagles have kind of an easier road, so to speak. They've got a lot of teams that they could stack up some wins on and start doing some damage and start feeling better before we meet November 10th. So don't count the Eagles out just yet don't count them out just yet and this is where it would behoove the cowboys to make a move for somebody like a Devonte adams again the price tag we know is way out of the Dallas cowboys range and not what the cowboys do but we can always dream so as we roll down the finished stretch here let's go to dan patrick and listen to what he had to say about the cowboys and the work they need to do uh, Dallas beat the G-Men 20-15. to 15. Uh, Malik Neighbors went out with a concussion there. Micah Parsons banged up his ankle as well. That was a boring game. That had all of the elements of why I hate Thursday night football. It was sloppy, a lot of uh, flags, and um, Dallas wins it 20-15. to 15. The spread, by the way, was five and a half. Five and yeah. a half. And there's a missed field goal. At the end of the game. Damn. Oh, no. <laughs> and that field goal kicker uh, is really good. But uh, he had, I think, two field goals during the game, uh, but then uh, had an opportunity for – I think they had over 80% of the money was on the Cowboys to cover. So Brandon Aubrey had field goals of 40 and 60 yards. But he had a 51-yarder that would have given the over as far as the over under a five and a half. Vegas knows what it's doing. You know, I'm watching the game and I go, what's the point? Is it five or five and a half? And then I go, five and a half. So 20 to 15. And this guy's lining up and he's pretty much automatic. And then he missed it. By the way, the Giants failed to score a touchdown for the second consecutive home game. Also... They are the first team to go without a touchdown in its first two home games uh, to start a season since, well, the 2023 Giants did the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! Ow! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! This is the stat of the day! Thank you, Melissa Etheridge. Stat of the day brought to you by Panini America. This first hour brought to you by King's Hawaiian. Sliding into the weekend brought to you by our partners at King's Hawaiian. And there's no shame in saying, hey, nice buns, Dan. Slider Sunday. Slide into the weekend. Family, friends, football, and enjoy the weekend. Here's another one. Yes, Eaton. Dak kind of owns the Giants. Yes, he does. Uh, you right think? Now. I think he's lost one time to them in his career. Yeah, I want to, it's like 13 games yeah. in a row or so, something he's beaten. So something like that. What, uh, that felt like a game that used to be sort of market on your calendar. Like, this is always a great rivalry game. I don't know if you could still say that. No, you can't. No, the Giants not are just when you own not them like that. Good! Yeah, <laughs> that's not a rivalry. Used to be with Washington and yes. Dallas. Yeah. Big rivalry game. The Cowboys and the Giants, big rivalry game. How many rivalries do we have in the NFL? Steelers-Ravens might be the most intense one, I think, right now. I mean, the Raiders and the Chiefs used to be a big deal. I mean, there's quite a few of them. You know, the Bengals and the Browns just for battle, you know, bragging rights in, in Ohio. Yes, Marvin. I think the one non-divisional rivalry, maybe I'm saying this because I'm a 49ers fan, 49ers-Cowboys. Yeah, because there's a history there. Right. But most of them are division, like uh, Packers, Bears. Yeah. Yep. But the Packers have dominated the Bears. So, I, it, I mean, is it a rivalry? Bears fans? Is that? Oh, no. oh it's not here. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's one for you. 
The Giants have failed to score a touchdown in four consecutive starts at home by Daniel Jones. That, no, hold on, hold on. That hasn't happened to a quarterback in the last 74 years. Start of the day, start of the day, start of the day, start of the day. All right, so the Cowboys get the win, but now, and I don't know if they're, look, they're the most covered team. I don't know if they're a good team. I think they have the potential to Are show good team? Yes. signs of being a very good team because you have C.D. Lamb. Dak is a good quarterback. Micah Parsons yet to really be impactful this year and then got banged up uh, last night. C.D. Lamb was the Cowboys' leading rusher. Mm-hmm. See, this is a problem. And, and I know Jerry Jones says, well, we can't sign them all. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but I would have made room for Derrick Henry. And, uh, you know, obviously Baltimore did. And then Derrick Henry goes in and, you know, gashes the Cowboys for whatever, 150 yards. You got to have somebody back there that resembles a running back that you would uh, actually buy into play action pass. You, you really do. And Again, that is our if fatal Dak flaw. is doing play action pass and making it seem like he might give it to Zeke Elliott, I'm like, <laughs> give it to him. I don't care. And now they're just throwing these little intermediate passes. You know, it's this is you know going to be a season long issue with them. But uh, the Cowboys next games they got the Steelers, Lions, bye week, Niners, Falcons, Eagles, Texans. That's pretty That's a, tough. That is really tough. I mean, the Steelers are going to – that defense obviously is great. The Lions, we've yet to see them regain their form from last year. The Niners might be healthy by then because there's a bye week and then they face the Niners. We know the Falcons are capable of being good, the Eagles and the Texans. That's a pretty good run there of quality opponents. But here is Dak Prescott not getting too excited after the win. It was huge. It was huge. Yeah, after obviously losing two, especially at home. Uh, coming on the road, first division game. Um, division wins are always tough. Uh, as I said, then you add on the road uh, before a long weekend. Um, puts a better taste, taste in our mouth. But at the end of the day, as I've, as I've said, even after those two losses uh, a couple weeks or, you know, the past two weeks, it's, it's a process. So we're not going to get complacent. We're not going to get overexcited about what we've done tonight. Um, it's about building. And it's about figuring out uh, what we can do better in all phases. Um, but it's a lot easier to do that with the win. It is. It and is. I just thought, get a clean win. Get out of there with a clean win. Get a couple of touchdowns. Get some sacks on Daniel Jones. Mm -hmm. And then live for another day. You couldn't afford a loss, a divisional loss to the Giants there. So they got the win. It wasn't pretty. But, uh, you it was know, a Thursday night you don't get style points at the end of the year. Just Get back to 500. Now you got a pretty pretty tough road here coming up. 877 3DP show. Uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll, leave, will, it, we'll yeah. leave it right there. So um, the internet is now blowing up right now with Devontae Adams, Cowboys, Jets, and everything else. So we'll have to get on the bandwagon with all of that. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I will see you soon.